fundamental problem F2-13 from the R.C. Hibbler Engineering Mechanics Statics book says, determine the coordinate direction angles of the force. And so as you can see in the diagram here, we have some kind of I-beam with an angled force at the left end here of 75 pounds, which is of course the force which we want to find its coordinate direction angles. And so before starting here, I'm going to retrace this force vector in red, just so that we can distinguish it more clearly. And of course, note that this force vector has a magnitude of 75 pounds. So now that this is clear, let's go ahead and define what exactly our coordinate direction angles will look like. In general, there are three coordinate direction angles, which are basically one for each axis in our 3D plane. So those three will be the angle alpha, beta, and gamma, where each basically represent each axis, x, y, and z, respectively. And now each of these angles are represented by a set of trigonometric equations, such as cosine alpha equals fx over f, cosine beta equals fy over f, and cosine gamma equals fz over f. And these equations are basically formulated from projections off of each coordinate axis, hence the name coordinate direction angles. And in case you're unfamiliar with these projections, I recommend you watch my video on this topic where I explain the derivation behind these projections. And now to begin, looking at the equation for alpha, you can see that, for example, we have the x component of the force fx. And so this basically means that we must find this x component to find the angle alpha. And looking at the diagram, this x component can be represented by this force vector that runs along the x axis. And now to obtain this x component, of course, we'll need to project this original angled force onto the x axis. But as you can see here, we have two different projection angles. And so ultimately, we'll need to have two projections in order to obtain this fx, since we can't directly project the force in its current configuration onto the x axis. And I know this geometry might look a bit intimidating or confusing at first, but trust me, this is a lot more simpler than it looks as we'll be going step by step, and this problem only requires basic trigonometry. And so, using the two angles we are given, how can we project this force onto the x-axis? Well, to do this, first of all, we must look carefully at the geometry that is formed from these two projection angles. And of course, you can see that we have two different triangles where we have this one side in the middle that is shared by both triangles, which I have drawn here in orange. And now since we are working with force vectors, which basically represent the sides of these triangles, I'll go ahead and call this, I'll go ahead and note this side as a force vector F prime, just like so. So now let's take it step by step. Let's first go ahead and focus on this first triangle here to find fx. So for fx, of course, we'll use it to find the angle alpha. And now let's go ahead and redraw that 30 degree triangle where we have the 75 pound force in red, then this vertical side along the z-axis, and lastly, the force f prime in orange, just like so. And of course, the force f is 75 pounds, and f prime is unknown. And between the force f and f prime, we have the angle of 30 degrees. And now, since we're working with a triangle here, remember that 75 pounds here is the magnitude of the force vector, which basically represents the length of this force vector. Hence, the length of this side of the triangle is 75. So now, we know two things about this triangle. And those are one angle 
and one side. And we want to find f prime, which is essentially one side of the triangle. And so in this case, we are essentially going to project the 75 pound force onto f prime. So we can consider this as the first projection. And so from this, keep in mind that projections pretty much come from the use of trigonometry. In other words, we use trigonometry for projections, where of course here we'll specifically use SOHCAHTOA. So in this case, we'll assume this is a right triangle. And so this makes the 75 the hypotenuse and the F prime the adjacent side. And since this is adjacent to the angle, we'll use cosine, where of course cosine theta, in this case 30 degrees, equals the adjacent F prime over the hypotenuse, 75 pounds. So now we can simply solve for F prime, of course, by multiplying the 75 pounds to both sides. Hence, we are left with F prime equals 75 times cosine of 30. So putting this in a calculator and making sure that we are in degrees, which I wasn't, by the way, we get approximately 64.95. Thus, F prime is equal to roughly 64.95 pounds. So therefore, that completes our first projection of force F. And now we are ready to perform our second projection, which will ultimately give us the value of Fx. So up here in the diagram, F prime was our first projection and fx will be our second projection. So now we are projecting f prime onto the x-axis. So again, let's go ahead and draw our f prime force vector. And this time we'll be using this 45 degree triangle since, as you can see, it shares a side with fx. So redrawing this triangle here, we'll have force vector fx. And then the side on the y-axis, which connects the tails of the two forces, completing our triangle. And now, of course, we have the 45 degree angle between F prime and the y-axis. And here, of course, the angle between X and Y is 90 degrees. So therefore, Fx here is the opposite side, and F prime is now the hypotenuse. Hence, we use sine to solve for Fx where we have sine of 45 degrees equals the opposite side fx over the hypotenuse f prime, which we can go ahead and simply write as 64.95. So solving for fx, we have 64.95 times sine of 45. Hence, simplifying this out, we get fx equals approximately 45.93 pounds. So this now completes our second projection where we have found the x component of our force. And so we are now ready to find alpha where we'll of course use the coordinate direction angle equation cosine alpha equals fx over f. So writing out the equation and substituting in our known values we have cosine alpha equals 45.93 pounds over our original force, 75 pounds. And so to find alpha, we of course take the inverse cosine of both sides, where we're left with alpha equals inverse cosine of 45.93 over 75. And so calculating this in a calculator, we will get approximately 52.24, so alpha equals 52.24 degrees. So now that we have found alpha, the coordinate direction angle from the x-axis, we can now find beta, the coordinate direction angle from the y-axis. So taking another look at the diagram, of course, we'll have the y component of our force, Fy, along the y-axis in this direction, just like so. And now since we'll also be using f prime 
to find Fy. I'll go ahead and just rearrange this section here. So I'll just label this section on top here as the solution for F prime. And so of course, for beta, we need to project our force onto Fy. And to do this, we can use the same triangle as last time, the 45 degree triangle, as this shares a side with the Y axis, where this third side is now Fy, which is the adjacent side. Therefore, to solve for Fy, we use cosine. And so just skipping out the simple algebra here, I'll just go ahead and quickly write this as Fy equals 64.95 times cosine 45. And so Fy equals 45.93 pounds, which as you can see is the same value as Fx. And this is because of the 45 degrees where of course, cosine 45 is equivalent to sine of 45. So now that we know the value of Fy, we are now able to solve for the angle beta, where beta is equal to cosine inverse of 45.93 over 75, which is basically a mirror of the equation for alpha. So beta is also equal to 52.24 degrees. So of course, due to the geometry, beta is equal to alpha. And now that we have found both alpha and beta, we can lastly find gamma, the coordinate direction angle from the z-axis. And so now we must project our force onto the z-axis with component fz, of course, being mindful of the original direction of the force, which points downwards in the negative z direction. And if you notice in this first 30 degree triangle, this side is equivalent to fz. So let's just go ahead and copy this first sketch over, where in this case, this side is now fz, which is the opposite side to the angle. So in this case, we'll go ahead and project the 75 pound force onto fz. Hence, let's go ahead and solve for fz. But now first, notice that fz points in the negative z direction. So we must add a negative sign to the right side of the equation, where we have 75 times sine, since this is the opposite side. And the angle, of course, is 30 degrees. Hence, simplifying the right side, fz is equal to negative 37.5 pounds. So now that we have fz, we can of course solve for gamma, where gamma in this case is equal to cosine inverse of negative 37.5 divided by 75. Hence, gamma is equal to 120 degrees. And we have now found all the required coordinate direction angles to describe our force. And hopefully you can see all the geometric and trigonometric implications involved in this problem. And again, if you haven't seen my previous lectures on this topic, I encourage you to do so to help you further understand the basics and derivations. And I'll go ahead and leave a few links to the lectures over in the description. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and a comment down below. And of course, subscribe for more, as this encourages me to keep making more videos. Thank you for watching.